episode 87 of the Pencil Din Podcast. Today we have Stéphane Leonardi coming to us from Paris. Welcome to the show. We really do have a, a solid French connection now. I think you're the third or fourth person we've interviewed from France. So that, that that's really cool. Welcome. Thank you. Sir. Merci beaucoup. Thanks. Thanks for having me on the show. It's nice to meet you, Stéphane. Um, we're going to start where we usually do, which is back at the beginning. We want to know what did you draw in your childhood and what kind of things were you inspired by? Well, that's uh, that's pretty uh, well simple. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, I used to read a lot of comic books. Uh, when I say comic books, uh, in French, it's called bande dessinée, so, um, not uh, just superhero stuff that you can read uh, like in the US or in the UK. So uh, I was, you know, reading like a lot of, of things, uh, emerging myself into this content, and I had a, a blast during all those years. And I started drawing like very early on and I uh, this were I knew this was something that I really liked to to do uh, right from the start and I kept drawing practicing up until my teenage years where I started thinking okay um, I can go a little perhaps a little bit further uh, because I, at the same time I was collecting uh, those books French uh, coming books and also I, I was thinking to myself hmm, perhaps let's not make a career out of it, but just try to think further and try to produce stuff, perhaps write some comics myself, draw some comics myself, just in my in my, uh, in my bedroom, just for myself. Uh, you know, uh, this is how it's, uh, it started. And I started also to uh, perhaps collaborate on some, um, how do you call, magazine, you know, the fanzines, uh, you know, the, the very, um, things that you can find that are printed on a very uh, short run, uh, uh, black and white, you know, this stuff that is really underground. Uh, so I started to do those things and uh, and I was really, you know, trying to try to develop my style and to, uh, to experiment all of this. And uh, yeah, this is basically how it, uh, it started. I mean, I've always drawn. And I always had, uh, I mean, this is the best thing I could do, actually. <laughs> Did you go on to study art after college, uh, after school? No, 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 not at all, actually. I'm just a self-made artist uh, all by myself, by practicing, copying, um, trying to get some inspiration from what I was seeing and reading. And uh, at some point, uh, and you're right to, to mention that, is that uh, I was uh, into college and then I went to the university. But before that, I was questioning myself, should I go on, on an art career or not? And I remember having some exchanges, heated exchanges with my parents at that point saying, <laughs> oh, I want to go there. I want to do that. I want to go, you know, in art school and so on and say, are you sure about this? I really want to do that. You know what's behind. You're going to struggle. It's going to be hard for you. I mean, just think about it. And, and I was like, ah, oh, I don't know. And, you know, it was a very conflicting uh, period where I was, you know, judging and evaluating my options. And I say, okay, well, I'm going to go f um, not the easy road, but the most secure one uh, mm -hmm. by doing some. Uh, business uh, uh, management uh, studies uh, for the university. And I kept the drawing and the illustration away, actually. Uh, this is where I, all of my time was devoted to my studies and uh, getting into, um, um, into work, actually, getting my first job and so on. So all of this was put under the carpet, in a way, mm -hmm. <laughs> unfortunately. I didn't have much time or much inspiration at that time. And this is something that I, you know, uh, put away, uh, not thinking about it. But yeah, this is how it it's, evolved. It's, kind of, it's good that you have um, business studies experience, though, isn't it? I mean, going forward in your art career now, I'm sure there's things you've learned that are going to help you be able to do that. Because there's a lot yes, of people of in bar mm. who have got no idea about business and, and they'll possibly be too afraid to even get into it because they don't 
understand the business world. So wish I had we'll just help you. Business. I really wish I had some mm. business studies behind me. It's something we should all have, actually. Yeah, business and marketing. This is the the stuff I was uh, focusing on, uh, and I think it helps me a lot these days because uh, I think all artists, in a way, I mean, we are all unique because we. Each of us have their own style. This is not something that you can copy. I mean, your style, Ingrid, cannot be copied in a way. Same for you, Lindsay, and for mine. I mean, we are all unique, right? Mm -hmm. And I think this is part of our identity. And as such, I think you need to also create your own brand. Mm -hmm. And this is part of all this, uh, you know, uh, idea of, you know, trying to market yourself. Nobody is expecting you, basically, <laughs> on this market. I mean, you're the one among millions of other mm -hmm. artists that are also talented, but you have to make your way through that. So I think branding is a good way of getting into that and by having your own uh, uh, set of, I don't know, gimmicks or whatever. I, I don't mm -hmm. know, something that really stands out from the rest. So that's very important right from the start. Yeah, definitely. So really? when... when did you take on your first professional art job, would you say? Well, did you first uh, Well, get paid actually, for? actually, it was uh, first paid. Uh, actually, I'm not going to lie to you. It was uh, three years ago, three years ago. Because uh, as I said, uh, I moved on to my uh, career, uh, I would say my regular career in uh, business and, and marketing. And uh, I put all my illustration and project away without really caring about it. Uh, I knew that I wanted to, to draw more, to spend more time illustrating stuff and so on, but I couldn't or wouldn't find the time to get back to the drawing board, get, you know, in the right mood to, to produce more and to have, a, let's say, even for myself, there's a pleasure to draw. And after that, perhaps make some money out of it and, you know, having, a, a, let's say, a grand plan, a master plan. So uh, I did leave this, uh, this uh, illustration career behind. And then three years ago, I had some well, personal issue and I had like a, a vision or like a revelation saying, okay, now is the time I'm old enough to say, okay, uh, now is the time. If I want to do it right, I want to draw, I want to illustrate. This is what I've always been yearning, you know, uh, this is something that resonates in, in your guts, I mean, in your mind, every, everywhere, and you want to do it. So let's get right to it. Let's get back to the drawing board and let's spend the time just to achieve the level that I would expect is good enough, <laughs> but it's never good enough, of course. No, uh, we so never this is a journey. It. Yeah, it's a, it's a journey. And, and three years ago, I took this decision to really spend what's necessary to get where I want to go. And since then, I've been creating, illustrating like I've never done before. And I'm so happy and satisfied about this. And there was no plan. I mean, I was like, okay, perhaps I make, can make a career out of it. That would be the ultimate goal. That's transition from my, let's say, day job to a full-time position as an artist. Why not? Uh, this is the, the best I could wish for me. Uh, and then I started, you know, to practicing, create some my own personal uh, stuff, my own designs, uh, not necessarily uh, stuff that I would exist like franchise, Star Wars, or Marvel comics, or whatever. Just my own personal stuff that reflects who I am and what, what I want. What to kind of what kind of personal stuff do you like to do? Do you have any examples to show us? Or I don't know how I can I show stuff actually on the. <laughs> we probably wouldn't be able to see it too well, but if you you could explain. Oh, well, it's, it's, uh, and will give me, uh, he will send us a couple of images and we'll put it in the video. Um, actually, my style is, uh, I'm always, I was always drawn into science fiction, for sure. Science fiction is a big part of my, uh, let's say, universe of uh, mm -hmm. what I want to, to translate. Uh, whatever it's uh, the science fiction that you may know, uh, like the Star Wars universe, of course, mm. uh, all the retro stuff, you know, from the 50s, the 60s, the golden age of, you know, uh, space exploration, this kind of thing. I really like it. I'm, I'm a sucker for this kind of design. I really love it. Uh, so all of this 
um, designs or themes are the ones that are really uh, I'm attracted to, to to them. So it's a kind of blend of science fiction, retro style, a bit of steampunk sometimes because I, I really like it. Uh, and most of the time, I, I really like to draw female figures. Uh, don't ask me why. I don't know. It's more interesting, and uh, and this is uh, the kind like... of theme I like to explore. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the, the, the style I, I want to explore and to dig in more, and, and also explore the techniques because I started, you know, with I remember when I was a kid, just with ink, like you know, regular ink, color ink, like the basic stuff. And then when I started to draw again, I started to say, okay. Uh, Let's try to go into the sketch card world. And I was using those markers. It was brand new to me. I was like, oh, interesting. But it's not mm. some, I don't like the way, you know, it's working. I say, what about some watercolor? And I was totally new to, to this technique. And now I feel much more confident. And using a color pencil of that of that. Uh, and mm. now I'm thinking, not today, but perhaps in, in the near future to, to deal with acrylic, for instance because this is something that I've never used so far. So, you know, keep exploring. And uh, I think that's really uh, what motivates me a lot, yeah. Oh, lots of fun to have. I mean, a good transition between um, watercolor and acrylic is gouache. Have you used gouache? Yes, and I, I think, yeah, I want, I know because it does exist, I think, uh, a mix between, well, reach the gap between watercolor and acrylic it's called gouache acrylic so you have yeah. best of both worlds actually you yeah. have the transparent and opaque uh, stuff that you can play with so uh, i haven't tried it so far so i cannot speak for it but uh, yeah so what is what? your what is Sorry, your favorite, what is your favorite so far uh, what are you really having the most fun with at the moment and all of those um mediums of the watercolor like watercolor must be a bit tricky to use on some card stocks i would imagine um oh no uh, i mean watercolor i never use it on card stock never never yeah. it's not the way to go i mean uh, it's good for illustration you have to have a special paper of course that can absorb all the humidity uh sketch card the best way to go and i think for most of us is just uh alcohol markers color pencils some fine liners, you know, multi-liners, and that's about it. I mean, uh, I know that you, Ingrid, you you play with paint all over your card, and I'm so amazed at what you can achieve. And I'm like, ah, oh, I can never do this kind of stuff. But it's well, so the, the brilliant. The stuff with acrylic is that you can put it on anything. I mean, anything you can. You it sticks to anything. You you could you could paint with it on wax paper, and it's gonna work. It's it's crazy for that oh, really? mm. is uh you know it's the way to go but it dries super fast so you kind of have to deal with that all there okay. you can add to it to extend it a bit you know that's a matter of playing with it to see what works for you and all of that um so before we started recording you were saying that you have a style that you use for the licensed work and then you have your your own personal cards that you have a different so you've managed to decide to keep some things so that you can explore and play with the different mediums and and all of that stuff i think that's that that's great that's great can you talk a little bit about that uh, i don't know if i really separate myself i mean it's hard for me to judge because uh what i've been producing so far it's only star wars cards and uh it's mostly portrait of either uh, um, human characters or aliens, stuff like that. So my reference are mostly, uh, mostly uh, photographs. So you have to deal with what you have in in, in your hand. I mean, uh, otherwise it might get rejected because it's not in line with what the character is. So you have to really draw it in a very, well, in the most realistic way. Uh, so I tend to to go down this, that, that, this style, sorry. And uh, my own personal style is a much more loose approach. I do, can use some reference, but it's something that is a patchwork of different things. Uh, I can get the expiration just from a pose, not the photograph itself. Uh, explore some color, some ideas, whatever. Uh, it's 
it's a, not a more relaxed approach, but uh, it's different. So I don't have necessarily to stick to this kind of realism that is mostly expected when you deal with sketch cards these days. Um, I think it's good, but uh, the trend is too, I think too much realism in a way. And the variety of style is not uh, as uh, um, the way I would expect. I mean, as a, I'm not collecting cards at the moment. I was in the past. Uh, what did you collect? I'm like, okay, I see some uh, Star Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. <laughs> Uh, mostly, uh, I, I did some other uh, some other uh, uh, card set like TV shows, like you know, Lost. I remember mm. uh, Game of Thrones. I think at some point, mm. but that was that was about it. Uh, but mostly, my focus was Star Wars cards. I, I really have a love for this franchise. It means a lot to me. So when I first got the chance to work and uh, and do those uh, sketch cards, I was really Really oh. delighted, really. I bet you were so happy. <laughs> what what yeah, was the yeah. first character that you couldn't wait to draw for Star Wars? Which which what was the first card you ever did? Who did you choose? Uh, I think it. Oh, it's hard to tell, but I think I have a uh, a good preference for aliens creatures mm. in general. Uh, because I think the, you can play a lot with the textures and the colors and everything wherever it's human it's a tricky a trickier approach because you have to be photorealistic in a way mm -hmm. of course uh if you miss something an expression uh, mm. uh if the eye is just below this uh, the mouth is uh, there ah, you missed it you can throw the it's whole off. light <laughs> one little mistake and the lightness is gone and you're, oh. <laughs> yeah and you have and also i mean uh, uh, working on this such a, a small size is challenging mm. itself. But yeah, uh, I, I mean, the, the most fun is uh, yeah having to uh, to um, to illustrate uh, creatures and aliens. I think it's the most uh, fun part for me. I have to agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a portrait person. Yeah. I, I like really subtle expressions and trying to get those trying to achieve those but then i go too far and lose the likeness if i do too much work on it yeah end up ruining it <laughs> yeah it's a fine balance huh? yeah i agree yeah. you have great expression in your uh, artwork Lindsay. I, I i love the expressions that you manage to to capture when you when you do your portraits and stuff i can well, see i love your painting because it's in, I, it, like uh stefan was saying the the impressionistic approach uh, my brain doesn't work like that Everything has to have a proper outline. I can't. Yours are just so free and loose, and I'm like, I can't do it. <laughs> age with age comes freedom. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Behind you, Stefan, uh, you have quite the the nice collection of. Um, I'm guess well, pretty much everything. <laughs> Figures. I don't know, have some. The cigar. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Oh, I have some stuff here. You know, that she is <laughs> great to draw from too, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. I have some. Well, that's a soaker up there. This one, of course. Yeah, that's cool. It's oh, a okay. I like that. I like that. Very and cool. you have a car down there in the corner. I want to see the car. Oh, <laughs> I want to see the car down there in the corner. Yes. Yeah, Which one? The car. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but further away from you. On the other shelf, it looks like a car. I see a wheel. It's red. Down, down. Oh, car! Oh, yeah, I can see. Oh, yeah, the red thing. When I was talking about retro, retro stuff. <laughs> oh, wow! Amazing! I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I'm, I love this stuff. I mean, it's. I mean, the design is. That looks like a Jetson perfect. thing. Mm. Exactly. I bet you like. Do you like all uh, the old sixties um, sci-fi buildings? You know, the just. Uh, I can't. I can't think who it is now. Who did them? Really cool looking sci-fi buildings. Yeah, All funny this kind of stuff as well. Awesome Godzilla. Sweet. But you know, because it's it's just fun. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I had one we used to call. I called him Bobzilla, and I used to take him to college with me. 
um so you you were talking a little bit uh, a while ago that you you had hoped to have a grand plan to plan your art career um and then you kind of just fell back into it uh with without a plan are you slowly creating a plan for your future or are you taking it as it comes uh, well the master plan is just something of course set in stone and it's pretty arrogant to say okay two years from now i will be there and five years i will be there and so on but uh first of all i mean the the key thing is to have fun for sure and i'm having a lot of fun by creating those sketch card being in the sketch card what community uh all these things to, to to I want to produce way more than I'm producing right now because I'm having a, so so much fun. So uh, for for now, this is where I, I, I'm focusing my efforts. And on the sides, I'm also uh, trying to focus on my personal, uh, let's say, um, portfolio where I'm not uh, relying on franchise uh, such as Star Wars, but just to create my own universe. My, own style and my own illustration so it's uh, a different approach because it's not something that i'm uh, i'm free this is what will bring the best of me i hope and this is clearly the, um, a different format because i I'm, i will be producing something that would is you like, like to, uh, would you like to create a whole world not a whole world but i like the idea of uh, what I like about illustration, when I mean illustration, is to create a piece that has that tells a story. Mm. That's what I mean about creating a world. Like you take a character, you think, okay, what is it telling? What is it? What what would be the main drive, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, and I, this is what fascinates me the most: is do you have what do you tell when you create something when you illustrate? And of course, you have to you have to know the techniques. Uh, set the moods and so on but what is it telling right from the start and I think this is the most uh, difficult part sometimes you have to play with oh, position a lot of things are into play I mean uh, you've heard of Boris Vallejo haven't you yes yeah yeah of course well a lot of it I mean obviously his technique and his skill is just amazing like no complaints about that but a lot of say like some of his sci-fi pieces his personal work no. There was very mishmashed and there was no story there. Like there'd be like a lady with some hooves and just a random thing here, and the, it didn't really come together. You know, like you're saying, it didn't really tell a story as such. It just seemed like random things plopped together, kind of thing. Something really beautiful, but yeah, this. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. A forest <laughs> with a unicorn, and that's pretty much all there is. <laughs> but hey, you know. The, the stunning to look at mm. but so yeah you, you well looking at your work and of course we'll, we have already popped in some some images it's telling myself in the future like yeah we'll be putting images of your work in you really do have two different styles when you're doing the realism for uh, for instance star wars and things like that and then you had um i think on your uh, facebook page you have some samples that you did for well yeah from the totally 80s or something like that i don't know which set it was uh it's the nightmares series from oh, artist the... unite yeah it was the halloween themed uh, set yeah nice and bright and strong and uh, very nice work so you, you're gonna try to go down that that road continue to uh, yeah because i enjoy it let me show you maybe this one yeah this is the one I was... <laughs> very cool yeah pretty pretty bright pretty mm. scary as well but like, you know I, i'm having a blast creating those illustration uh, and that was as you said it's a little yeah copics you did that one with copics uh yeah yes and very color right. pencil really nice do you think you'll create your own card set in the future? Uh, not necessarily, but I like the idea of playing and creating a promo card. Uh, and this is a, a funny story uh, because you're mentioning it right now. Uh, last year, um, usually uh, 
when there is a Star Wars celebration, you know, the convention that is held every year or every two years, uh, I started going there in Chicago in two, uh, 2019 mm -hmm. in the US. So I went there uh, just just for a week. Uh, I said to my wife, I, I, I need to go there. I, I'm going to have so much fun. She said, yeah, of course, go away. Uh, so I went there. <laughs> They said, okay, I, I don't care about Star Wars, so please, you can go. Uh, so I went there, I had a blast going there. I spent a, a, a very fun time there. And I said, okay, to myself, I need to go to the next ones that will show up in the future. So the next one was supposed to be uh, in Los Angeles uh, in 2020, but because of COVID, it was postponed. 2021 20, postponed again. And it was back on on 2022. So um, I went back there and I said to myself, I should bring something else with me, not just being there as a regular attendant. Uh, I like cards. I like Star Wars. What about doing some promo cards with my own artwork? When I say own, own artwork is just like I would do for sketch cards. So. Uh, I did the exercise and I created a, a vintage style Star Wars card as a promo card with my artwork. Can and I could it? sign it just, you know, on the back. Yeah. Um, let me show you quickly. I love that. And I use it as a, as a promo card just to show my stuff, of course. But I think the, it's part of the greater uh, approach, which is... Uh, when you go to this kind of convention, you can bring your own swag to give people for free, just to start a conversation or you're in line, uh, whatever, just, just for free, just to, for the fun of it. People create keychain, stickers, patches, whatever, trading cards, of course. And I did mine as well, just with me. I did this. Very cool. Uh, you've done it. I love it. What what, uh, what yeah, yeah. do you use to create it? The original uh, art? Actually, oh, it was a watercolor uh, uh, illustration, but it's way larger than the actual size, of course. So I have to shrink it, which looks better, of course, on the card. And I used to, I printed something like 200 or 300. And I stayed there for the four days of the convention. I was starting to, you know, hand those out for anyone. And usually people used to uh, uh, return the favor by giving back their stuff, like, as I said, patches, uh, stickers, whatever. I mean, people are so creative in this convention. I mean, you get some amazing stuff. So swag is a really good part of, of the fun in those Star Wars conventions. Really? And uh, so I, I did this and I was so surprised because you get to meet a lot of people. People are so... Um, so happy when you have those kind of thing. I mean, just, wow, a trading card. Yeah, it's your, your stuff. Wow, well, nice. Blah, blah, blah. So it starts conversation. It's really, really great. And I remember uh, <laughs> one, 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 one thing is that uh, also when you are in this convention, you rely also on Facebook groups just to meet other people or group of people just to uh convene of a time and place just to um, exchange stuff both uh, swag and i remember when i was uh, in line at some point uh, talking with someone to get some autograph someone came to me hey stefan stefan can you autograph me can you sign the card for me that you gave me a, a few hours earlier and people were just all around me saying who was that guy and i was like <laughs> oh this is what fame Look like <laughs> awesome. Oh, that was really that's... funny. That was really funny. <laughs> so <laughs> people were like, oh, he's signing stuff. Who's that guy?" <laughs> so I, I did. This, so I did this for for Los Angeles last year, and I had some remaining cards that I gave out to people online as well. I just after the show, saying I got some free stuff. I can ship it for free to you, and this is how I met other people, other collectors, and so on. Uh, in the Star Wars cards community. And I did the same thing this year in London for the Star Wars celebration. In I was April. so sad I missed it. I, I oh, wish you I weren't there? Oh, too bad. No. 
the all the hotels and everything they sell out immediately as soon as they know that uh, that convention is going to be there gone um i mean it's only two hours away from me on the train so i could have made it down maybe mm. for a couple of hours but then it's expensive to get your tickets not you know in in advance so yeah, I need to be better organised because there were so many people I would have loved to meet from from the community. You know, yeah. they came from America and like you coming over from France and, you know, I'm probably not going to get a chance to meet these people again until Star Wars is back in London. <laughs> Whenever yeah, well, will... the next one will be in Japan. Huh? Next one will be in mm-hmm. Japan in next year and, well, not next year, 2025, yeah, so... Mm-hmm. Are you yeah, go? I'm gonna... yeah, I'm going. Yeah, it's, it's going and I will bring my own cards also as well. <laughs> you know, this and just to show you, this this is the type of card I was handing to people. Oh, very nice! Oh, wow, very nice! Yeah. All signed, of course. Oh, beautiful! So I had the different designs that I was also handing out to people. Just you know. Just for the fun of it, I mean, uh, I mean, there's no better way. I mean, this swag community again. This is the, the best that you can think of. It's mm-hmm. you can at the end of the convention, you have a full bag of stuff of Star Wars stuff. It's amazing, amazing. It's pretty cool because I think actually that's sort of kind of the origins of uh, of trading cards and and. Uh, I think well, they literally are called trading cards. You're meant to trade and swap them, and you know. Um, mm. But nowadays, say like with my my son's school, we had a message just the other day: do not bring any trading cards to school because I think they cause arguments and issues and whatever. But that means the hobby's not because that's where you used to trade them in the playground at school. Huh. You know, yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. not allowed to anymore. It's just kind of killing the hobby. But I mean, I understand they have to keep the kids calm, but it's a uh, boo. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that. That uh, it reminds me, we interviewed somebody like I don't know a year and a half ago. I think Greg Greg McLaughlin. I think he has a he also has a podcast, but he does a lot of swag that he gives for free when he goes to conventions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There all kinds of cards and in series and things like that so i think it's i think it's great actually it's really great i mean uh once you i mean it's very addictive really like uh, I, next i mean the next convention will be held in japan in tokyo in april of uh 2025 yes uh and i know i'm going to have a blast uh, there i mean it's uh, it's crazy it's crazy knowing that uh, people will uh, exchange stuff and trade and create special, you know, uh, design stuff, Star Wars related stuff, not only trading cards. But... So we're going to slowly head on out the door. What advice do you have for people who are like either coming into the hobby as a collector or coming into the hobby as an artist? What What are your words of wisdom to pass on? Um, first of all, as a collector, well, I, I, uh, it's uh, it's interesting for me because I'm on either side at the moment. I was a collector not uh, so long ago. I'm still am, but on a very limited scale, meaning that I'm only uh, picking a card here and there. Mm. It's not like buying boxes or you know breaking boxes, uh, this type of thing. Uh, so my interest uh, I've I've shifted from a collector standpoint to uh, an artist standpoint where. I really want to focus on what I'm producing uh, as a, as an artist. So as a collector, my advice is, well, collect what you like, of course. First of all, that's the key, key message for me. So don't listen to people saying, I mean, yeah, you should buy this card because, you know, it has a lot of possession. You can flip it and earn a lot of money. Uh, well, sure. I mean, this is the side of the, of the hobby. Fine. But first of all, collect what you like. I think that's that's the key point for me. Uh, and as an artist, uh, as a new artist now on the sketch card uh, world, I would say uh, uh, if you want to break in, it's just to be uh, persistent uh, because I have tried to you know, follow up a lot of time before getting my first gig. So 
don't 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 harass people, but keep coming back back uh, with your samples, your portfolio. Try to add some new stuff, and you will pay off at some point. I think uh, I know that I was. Uh, I had a, not a plan, but when I started, I said, "Okay, let." I know it's going to take time. Let's let's take like a year. If after a year nothing comes up, I will do something else. I will not try to insist. Uh, but it took me six months actually just to get my first response and get invited for my first set. So mm-hmm. I was pretty pleased. Okay. And uh, after I was invited for other sets as well. So yeah, pretty pretty uh, pretty happy. That's wonderful. Do you have any questions, um, Lindsay? Where do you, what do you see for you in the future? I mean, I know you said you you haven't got like after two years, after four years, after. But is there somewhere you would like to reach eventually? Um, I think it's very strange because uh, for now I'm working mainly on sketch cards and I also as for illustration. Sketch card is a very very tiny format. I mean, it's very limited uh it's very challenging and these challenges are very helpful for also uh um feeding your work when you're working on larger scale and uh, i've noticed this is what i've been not because yeah this is what i've been noticing so my process has somehow changed to take that into account and I feel much more comfortable. I, I want to produce, let's say, a larger piece for sure. This is my my goal. When I say illustration, I, I imagine you know something that you can really you know frame a big one piece that tells a really st- a good story. Uh, this is what I would like to achieve, really. But you know, you it's, maybe want uh, to work I'm not separate. So. Would you maybe want to work towards base cards then? Base card art, which is obviously bigger to shrink. Yes, yes, yeah, that would be, yeah. You, you, you can shrink it, of course, and take it into mm-hmm. Basecamp, but I, I really like, you know, the, the the possibility of displaying a large format, for sure. I think but that's, that's, it does not come into conflict with what I'm doing on SketchUp because it's basically, well, not the same thing, but it's helping each other. I mean, it is good to see where the road's going to take you as well, because if you can, if you have something in your mind and you're really sure about it you can miss other opportunities along the way and you know it's good to see see what comes but along. so far i mean yeah creating sketch cards it's so much fun to be honest sometimes the deadlines are here to remind you that it can be brutal but i mm-hmm. mean it's fun it's still fun that is <laughs> awesome this has been a, a fascinating expert um interview and a, a, it's been very interesting to listen to you sp- speak about your point of view, your very feet on the ground, and uh, wish you all the best in the future. Um, where can people find you online? Uh, actually, uh, my main uh, well uh, account would be my Instagram page. Uh, it's called... Uh, it's, it's gone now. Uh, my uh, Instagram page would be art of Stefan Leonardi. Okay. Um, so that's a long, uh, long so name. On and uh, more than anything else, Instagram. Well, is your... my social would be Instagram, and then uh, I have my Facebook page, uh, which is called Heart of Stefan Leonardi. Very original. <laughs> Both are linked, so you can find the stuff that I'm publishing on Instagram. You can find it on Facebook with other stuff that I'm not. Yeah some new, not exclusive stuff, because this is not the word for it, but some other stuff. And also I have my uh, own website, which is just like a um, a gallery, like, you know, most of the, uh, it's not uh, as um, detailed or as big as what you have on, on Instagram. So Instagram. But Instagram, and so, yeah, <laughs> social is the, the best way to, to find my stuff, yeah. You're not on threads or... Uh, no, not Twitter. in Europe. It's not available in Europe, actually. Oh, really? I didn't <laughs> because know Because of regulations. Yeah, privacy yeah. regulations you know are really what? strict. Yeah, so threads, uh, 
want to give up my threads thing. I never use it anyway. And I mean, uh, it's just so ridiculous, all this. Uh, anyway, sorry. Old lady moment here. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for having come on to uh, to talk with us. I hope you'll come back. Thank you again. That reminds me, um, I, surely you, you have a sketchbook. When you say sketchbook, what do you mean? Sketchbook, say... Um, and leave the skills, a sketchbook where you play around with, uh, you know, sketches and just uh, because we're going to do a sketchbook ep episode and uh, with lots of people. So I'm wondering if you would like to come on uh, when we put that together and share your art and your sketchbook and, and explain uh, your passion for that, if you have one. Just to be precise, when you say sketchbook, is it uh, elaborated pieces or just doodle, you know, things that are really doodle. random or? Doodle. I did. Okay. Doodle. Yeah, yeah. I have this. Yeah, yeah. With pleasure. Yeah. Hmm? Cool. Awesome. So definitely. You can count me in. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, all right. The sketchbook is. is super. We oui, super. So it's super of fun. Uh, great. Well, we're just knocking off those boxes today. Cool. All right. Thank you so much <laughs> for having come on. Can't wait to see you in the sketchbook episode. And we'll try to catch up again with you next year and see where you've come before you go to whatever Star Wars convention is happening next year. I'm Who knows? Sure. Thank you again. Thank you so very much. <laughs> nice to meet you, Stefan. Thank you. Bye-bye.